Hi folks, it's FPL General here recording another episode of my 59th Minute FPL podcast. I'm recording on Wednesday morning, the 17th of April, so the scars are still there from last night's uh, Brighton performance and, and the performance in the double game week as a whole. So I'm going to try and remain as upbeat as possible as I can in this episode, as challenging as that's going to be. Uh, we've got Champions League tonight, City, Spurs and Liverpool all in action. So I haven't given double game week 35 too much thought yet until after those games. Because as we know, one injury in either of those games can completely change our plans for the weekend. So I'm going to let the Twitter questions kind of dictate the structure of this podcast. Just going to let them lead and they will hit on the main talking points from the fallout of game week 34. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start the pod with a shout out to Matt Doherty, who played 59 minutes at the weekend. His first 59th shout out of the season. He was the only player in the league, as far as I know, who played 59 minutes. Uh, Pascal Gross came off in the 53rd minute last night. So Gross and his teammate Glenn Murray are are two players who are still looking for their hat trick of. 59 minute shout out so there's what five four or five games left so let's see if, if one of those guys can do it i'm not going to dwell on 34 too much i don't think anybody wants to um it was i'll just do a quick review of, of how it went for me i played my wild card uh absolute disaster 42 points i think most people who played a wild card this week more than likely didn't have a very good game week uh, I dropped from 295k to 360k, so some of the good work I had done in 33 was undone in 34. But again, you know, well set up for bench boost in 35. So anything, anything can happen in, in a double game week. Lots of fixtures, lots of players playing twice. So hopefully you can bounce back from from 34. But you know, t- to be honest, I'm just I am just looking forward to to the season being over now. Uh, May twelfth really can't come quick enough for me. I put a I put a tweet up last night during the game, just saying, "Can we just fast forward to May twelfth so this night nightmare can end?" Because you know anyone who follows me will know that this has been my worst ever season, and anything that that could go wrong has gone wrong this season. So I'm really looking forward to the to the summer break and and just you know reflecting and see what can be learned from this season. Pick the bones of it, which will probably take a couple of days to really get into the nitty gritty and find out what went wrong and I will do a, a podcast at the end of the season when the season finishes I'll do a, a post-mortem podcast and, and see what I can take from it and what I'll take into next season and, and see if there's anything I'll do differently um, but yeah just just going to try and enjoy the last the last month now um, one of the main main priorities for me is trying to avoid relegation in Elite 64 I, you know, I'm I'm already starting to prepare myself for life in the qualifier league because I think I'm about forty, I'm about forty five points away from safety. So you know, and with a lot of good managers around me also fighting to avoid relegation, it's going to be very very difficult. So I may go I may go crazy in the last couple of weeks and take a few uh, crazy punts just to, you know, maybe I might just forget about my overall rank in the last maybe two or three weeks and just go against some of those players in Elite 64 to, to try and avoid relegation. So again, back back to 34, I, like many others, Captain Shane Duffy. Um, in hindsight, obviously, not a good decision, but I still stand by it. And, you know, if I was doing it all over again, the situation, the way it fell with, you know, Harry Kane getting injured, no other standout captaincy options and two home fixtures for Duffy, I would have done the exact same thing again. Um, I don't think anybody expected Brighton to concede seven and score zero over the over the two games. So very disappointing. Um, but as I say, the rest of my team, there was no other real good captaincy options anyway. I, I didn't captain Son because I thought he'd be rested, which he was. He was lucky to get the assist because he wasn't on the pitch for very long. I never really considered Eriksson. Uh, Vardy was my vice captain. Obviously, he blanked as well. So. You know, I can't. I don't have to. I really don't have any regrets about Duffy because at the time it was the right decision for me, and and I, and I know a lot of people and a lot of other people felt the same way as well. So, uh, just got to ignore the, the the Twitter trolls and the the captain hindsights now for the next couple of days. Um, what else went wrong for me? Aguero was my only 
Man City player. So again, like like has happened so much this season, I, I backed the wrong City player. Uh, De Bruyne and Sterling came in with a point. So you know, part of me reg- you know regrets not getting a Man City midfielder on the wild card. Um, and I may I may look to get one in. You know, if not this week, possibly game week thirty six. So disappointing from Aguero. Uh, I didn't watch the game, but by all accounts, he didn't look himself. So that's a bit worrying. So I'll be watching him closely in the Champions League tonight to see see how he looks ahead of 35. Yeah, very disappointing from the strikers. Uh, Jimenez, Vardy and Aguero got me five points between them. So thanks a lot, lads. Uh, the most frustrating of all for me was uh, Trippier. I had Trippier and I, I got Kolasinac as well. So started Trippier, benched Kolasinac uh, and both players didn't play. And both both teams got clean sheets, so that really just sums up my season. So I didn't even get the the auto sub of of a class and that's clean sheet in in uh, for that game. And of course, Arsenal's first clean sheet away from home all season is the game where I get class and in for the first time. So as I said, roll on May twelfth, we can get this painful season over and done with. So I'm going to jump into questions now. After the questions, I'll touch on the captaincy, which is very interesting this week. And then just somehow he's keeping the finish up. So hopefully it won't be much more than half an hour of this pod. First question came in from FPL Logic. Should we still use Bench Boost in 35, given that we have Dross like Brighton and Ward Prowse on the bench? So yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people now possibly shelving their plans to Bench Boost in 35 because maybe they have double Brighton. Some people have triple Brighton and they've got you know two away fixtures. I think it's Wolves and Spurs. So you're really not expecting much from the Brighton guys in that one, especially after what they did in this double game week with easier fixtures at home. Uh, Troy Deeney is a big headache for anyone who got him last week with a view to use him in the double game week. Somehow I dodged that bullet, thankfully. Um, so my, my current thinking is I'm going to stick with my plan to bench boost um the only real worry you know i do have a couple of worries really when i think about it i've got valerie who's flagged but as far as i know it was just cramp last week so again i'll be waiting for the press conferences for hassan hootel to give us an update on valerie hopefully if valerie gets the green light i'll probably just stick with my plan uh of of uh, getting rid of camarasa for a double game week player and then hitting the bench boost um i've got question marks as well over trippier and kalasinac but I would expect them to play at least one of the two games in, in the double game week. So I think I'll just stick to my plan and go go bench boost. But there is definitely, uh, I can see why people are changing their mind now. You know, if you've got Dini, if you've got a bench of Dini, Ryan, you know, Duffy and Dunk, you know, you really don't want to use bench boost now. Uh, you don't want to have three Brighton players for the bench boost. And obviously Dini's suspended. Well, he is suspended. I think there is a chance they may appeal that ban. So, you know, it, I, I watched I watched that red card a few times yesterday. And from some angles, I thought, yes, definitely a straight red card. And then from other angles, I thought, do you know what? Maybe that's a bit harsh. So I don't know what's going to happen with the appeal. My guess is that, you know, he will be banned. I think his previous record will probably go against him in that, in that case. So it is probably worth not selling him just yet, just in case of an appeal. So maybe wait until Friday for the for the Dini out transfer. I'm gonna I'm going there's a question on Dini replacements coming up, so I'm gonna to touch on some of them. But back to the the bench boost or not to bench boost uh, question. The the thing about not you know changing your plans and not bench boosting now in 35 opens up the triple captaincy for anyone who's got that left. So I've got triple captaincy left. Um. So I think this will be something I'll ha- I will have a look at the possibility of you know postponing the bench boost, but I most likely I'll stick stick with my plan. Um, one of the reasons I am not overly keen on triple captaincy in thirty five is you know I'll touch on it when I come to captaincy later in the pod, but there's just there's nobody you know there's no real standout captaincy this week. There's so many so many good options, um, and I don't I don't, I just don't think I think I'm going to find it quite hard to settle on a captain in the first place, let alone a triple captain. So I still think I'll keep it for a single game week uh, later in the season. So definitely, you know, if you do have, if you're looking at your bench now and, and, and you were planning to bench boost and it doesn't look as good as it did last week, definitely think about maybe postponing it. And, you know, look, it's, it's always good to be open. You know, you can, you've got to be flexible in FPL and one week changes everything. So 
be open to the idea of possibly not playing it this week and, and just figure out what's best for your team. That's that's the main thing. Um, you know, Brighton, I think in 36, Brighton play Newcastle at home. So there may even be, you know, it may even be better to, you know, save a transfer this week. Then you've got two transfers for 36 to set up for the bench boost or, or even 37. So it's, it's definitely worth looking at now, I think. Second question was from Luke Kempner, and Luke said, Attend the tale of Dini Todd. What should I do about Troy Dini? So, if he is confirmed, suspended, uh, which I think he will be, um, there's lots of options here. Um, and I'm just glad I don't have him because I really don't know which way I would go. I think the first one, if you've got the cash, I think Jimenez is a no-brainer, given his form this season and, and the two home fixtures in the double game week. Um, the next player I'd probably look at if you've already got Jimenez, I, I think it's I think this could be one that you don't overthink and you just get Callum Wilson, who plays Fulham at home. You know, Callum's coming off the back of another very good performance last week. Um, and, you know, yes... The attraction is always the double game week players, but I would fancy Wilson to to get good points as a single game week player in 35. So I think that's most likely what I would do with Dini. Uh, if I had the, I think you probably need an extra bit of cash as well there for that move. But I think I would just go Dini to Callum Wilson. Don't overthink it and just watch Wilson's points roll in because I'm not going to have him. So you're so you're safe. Uh, the others to mention then are. Uh, I like uh, Danny Ings is a possibility. I had him earlier in the season. You know, he burned me quite a few times because of his in- injury issues. But uh, he started the last two league games that he that he could start. He he missed the Liverpool game because he's on loan. I think, as far as I know, there. So fitness is better than it has been. He has been coming off around sixty minutes, which is not ideal. So I do think he could be a, he could be a nice differential though for the double game week. You know, Southampton have good fixtures and and they're playing very well. Which is another another big factor there, you know they're the polar opposite of Brighton. Uh, who else? Urente. I like Urente as well. I watched that Spurs game at the weekend and I was very impressed by Urente. He's probably the best I've seen him play this season. You know his hold up play, you know his his, his all round play, his first touches. You know he had quite a few chances as well. He really should have got on the score sheet at least once in that game. Now I don't think my guess with Spurs is well if I was Pochettino, Urente wouldn't play. In the two Man City games coming up, you know Champions League, and then in the league at the weekend. But I think after those City games, that Urenti, you know, has a very good chance of starting every league game for the rest of the season, given his performance last week. So, I think Urenti is not a bad option. Um, I've already got triple Spurs, and I know a lot of people will already have triple Spurs. But if you don't, Urenti is definitely one to think about. Um, you might only get one game out of him in the double game week, but it's probably you know the Brighton game at home, so he could easily score ten plus points in that game, given how poor Brighton have been. Uh, who else? I've seen you know straight swaps mentioned. Dini to Gray. You know I've even seen success mentioned. I'm not overly keen on those moves. Uh, I would prefer Wilson to Gray or success. Uh, there was a good Reddit post this week I came across. You know, it looked at when Dini hasn't played this season. So I think it was seven games Dini hasn't started this year. And in those seven games, Gray has only started one of them. So that that's enough straight away to put me off, uh, Dem- uh, not Damari Gray, Andre Gray, for this double game week. Um, I think a lot depends on Delafeu. From from that Reddit post, it, su- it suggested that when, when Delafeu plays, you know, it's success who plays with him rather than than gray you know that doesn't mean that's going to happen you know that was earlier in the season success hasn't really done much this season so gray could get the game time but that that doubt is enough for me just to sway away from from gray and success and um, it possibly you know to the dini the dini suspension probably makes dela feu now a better option i think um and, he, and he's someone i'm looking at as a camera replacement fitness dependent on that one um have I got anyone else here for Dini replacements? The only other one I noted down was, um, I mentioned Danny Ings. I've seen some people mention Shane Long as well, and I don't really understand that one because, first of all, he doesn't start every game. You know, he didn't start the last game. Yes, he scored 2-2, two and two, but Shane Long, don't forget, went over a year. I think he went over a year without scoring a goal. Um, he definitely went an extremely long period for Ireland, not scoring a goal, so... 
again, I guess the idea with Long is possibly people getting him in because he's cheap and then maybe upgrading in midfield or, or defence. So maybe there is a bit of logic there, but for me, you know, I'd much rather get in a player who, who's going to play play in the double game week. So I, I'm not keen on Shane Long. Um, I think I think I've covered the main candidates there for Dini replacement. So Jimenez would be my go-to man if I had cash. Wilson would probably be next. And if I had to choose between Urenti and Ings, I think I would probably take a chance on Urenti if I didn't already have triple spurs. I just I find it very hard to trust Danny Ings with his fitness. I, I I was listening to another pod this week and they described him as being made of wet paper. I think it was, and that's a pretty pretty good uh, pretty crude description of Danny Ings. Moving on from Troy Dini to the next question is from Shashank Patole. Uh, he asks, "Has Salah become a key player to have again?" So I don't have Salah. I got rid of him on wildcard and I went for Manny instead. Now, watching that Liverpool-Chelsea game at the weekend, Salah did look very sharp. He looked back to his best, especially after he scored the the amazing goal that he did score. So, you know, part of me is worried about not having Salah, but then I just, you know, pinch myself and remind myself where I am in the ranks and it really doesn't matter that I don't have Salah because my season is is really done and dusted now. Um, but I mean, if I was, I think if I was, high, if I was doing better this season and I was, you know, in the top, top 100k, top 50k, I'd definitely be giving Salah a lot of thought, you know, if I didn't own him, uh, especially with Cardiff next and then Huddersfield, you know, could really see him do well in those games. And, you know, he's a, he's a very good triple captaincy candidate for, you know, either of those games really, but probably more so the Huddersfield home fixture in 36 um, if I don't, you know, if I continue with my plan of bench boost 35, I may go Manny triple captain against Huddersfield. Um, but again, you know, Salah probably feels it probably feels more comfortable giving it to Salah, given you know his previous, you know, what he's done in previous, you know, last season and things things like that. But Manny could easily match him as he has done all season. So yes, I think Salah is a key player to think about. Um, I think if you have him you're probably feeling pretty smug and, and confident that he's going to do well for you for the rest of the season. And I think if you don't have him, you should at least think about getting him back in. But for me, you know, I, as I said, my rank is is not where it should be. And I'm just I'm probably just going to avoid Salah for the rest of the season and just stick with Manny. Uh, if I triple up on Liverpool again, it'll probably be to get uh, another defender alongside Robertson. Um, but I fully, I fully expect Salah to, you know, continue to, to punish Next question was from Rushi. Uh, should we take hits to get rid of Brighton players? Yeah, good question. A lot of people are going to be considering this this week. You know, do they take a minus four to get rid of the likes of Dunk and Duffy or Murray? Um, my situation is I've got Ryan and Duffy, just two. So I'm glad I didn't go for the triple up. Um, and I, you know, I'm probably going to hold on to those two. I think it's different with goalkeepers. There's always the hope of points from, you know, saves and penalties. So I'm probably going to keep Ryan for the double. I'm probably going to keep Duffy as well just because there is always the chance that he can get a, a goal from a set piece. But I think if I was on uh, Dunk or Murray, I think I would probably minus four to get rid of them because you're really not expecting much from them, you know, against Spurs and Wolves. Um, even Duffy, you know, I'm really not expecting much, but I still don't really fancy the minus four for Duffy when there is the chance that he could, you know, he has he has got a lot of goals this season, so there is always hope with him. Um, but there's, I just don't think there's as much hope with the others, you know, the likes of Murray and, and Lewis Dunk, and I know some people went for the fullbacks as well, the likes of Montoya and these guys. I don't think Montoya played both games in the, in in the, in midweek, so. Again, you're probably just going to minus four and get rid of them. The question then is, who do you replace them with? So the I think the go-to teams, if you're replacing Brighton players, are Wolves, uh, Southampton, and, and probably Watford as well. You know, when you know if you're talking about similar price ranges, obviously if you've got cash, you're going to upgrade. Um, you know, Southampton are playing great stuff. Wolves are just a great side, uh, and Watford have good fixtures as well. So I think if I was looking. If I had Dunk, I'd probably look and maybe to move to possibly Bolly at Wolves. You know, he's not too far away price-wise. 
Uh, Southampton offer loads of options in defence for cheap prices. Valerie, Bednarek, Yoshida. I like Bertrand as well as a differential. You know, there's loads of options there at Southampton. Uh, Watford is a tough one because they chop and change so much defensively. So, you know, a lot of people are asking me, who's the best Watford defender? Who's the most nailed-on Watford defender? And I think the answer is we just don't know. Um, Especially now that... You know, they don't have an awful lot to play for. So they could they could rotate even more now. So that's why I that's why I went for Foster on the wild card rather than a Watford defender because it's so it's so unpredictable who plays there. If you if you do want to go for a Watford defender, if I had to pick one, I think I would probably go Cathcart. I think he probably has the best chance, in my opinion, of playing both games. But again, it's very unpredictable what Grazzi is going to do there. Next question, and the last question I will take this week was from Trevor Mochadisi. Uh, Trevor's asking a question that I'm asking myself this week as well, which is, who should we replace Camarasa with? So Camarasa, you know, he he got the assist against Brighton, which was a, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. You know, at least at least Camarasa got me some points in that game. I think he got, I think he came away with seven, you know, over the two games, which is. Very happy with that from Camarasa. That was why I put him in there, just to hope that he would get something. Um, so he, you know, limited the damage a little bit last night. But now I'm looking to move him on because he plays Liverpool in 35, and I don't want him for my bench boost. So when I played my wild card last week, I left. I think I left 1.8 million in the bank with a view to upgrading Camarasa this week. So. First of all, I think for anyone who doesn't have cash in the bank, who wants to sell Camarasa, I think you just go to Hoiberg at Southampton, 4.4. More than likely, he'll get you two games of 90 minutes. And he does have an attacking threat as well this season. So, again, not one to overthink there. If you're like me and you've got a bit of cash, the three players I'm looking at are De La Feu. Now, I need to see what Grazia says in the press conference about his fitness because he didn't play uh, the last game. The other, the other two are Jota and Redmond at Southampton. So Jimenez is my only Wolves player at the moment. I may get Jota in to double up with him. They've got such a great partnership this season. I think it's, I think it's the best in the league, as far as I know. I could be wrong on that. I seen a, I seen a stat on match today. You know that showed the best partnerships in the league this season. And Jimenez and Jota, if they're not number one, they're definitely, they're definitely top three. So you know when, when Jimenez scores you know you're there's a very good chance that Jota's going to be assisting them so I may go for the double up there Redmond really caught my eye at the weekend watching the highlights you know he's he's really an out of position player you know he's he plays he plays on the last line of defense you, you know they utilize his pace to get in behind uh took us two goals very well at the weekend so I'm, I'm thinking about Redmond the the issue I have with Redmond is I've got Ward Prowse as well. I've got Valerie, so it would be a Southampton triple up, and I'm just not sure if I want to do that. But um, I think at the moment Redmond is probably winning the race out of those three for my transfer in this week. You know, I would triple up on Southampton for the bench boost and then just bench them. You know, bench them for the rest of the season. But they do have good fixtures. You know, so I probably would end up you know maybe benching Valerie and Ward Prowse. And then maybe using Redmond in my starting eleven for the rest of the season. You know, I got Jota. I mean, sorry, I got JWP last week. But I think if I was making that decision this week, I think Redmond is a better option now than than Ward Prowse. So if I get Redmond, I'm just going to hope that both of them do well uh, in the double game week. So that is my that that kind of covers my transfer this week as well. You know, it's if. If everything goes smoothly in the Champions League, I'm just going to get rid of Camarasa for one of those three. Uh, if something went wrong in the Champions League, you know, you know, the likes of Aguero, the Spurs players, uh, Liverpool players, I'd probably more than likely take a minus four. Then, you know, I don't, I really don't mind taking a minus four going into this uh, double game week if it's for a for a double game week player. So, all eyes on Aguero for me tonight. See how he looks. You know, I. I'm not really feeling overly confident about him uh, for the double game week. So hopefully he looks a bit sharper tonight. And even even if everything does go smoothly, 
I haven't ruled out possibly going to minus four to get in a Man City midfielder, you know, De Bruyne or Sterling. So that is in the back of my mind as well. But again, just need to see how tonight goes, Champions League, and then I'll reassess things further tomorrow. Moving on to captaincy, I just had a quick look on Fantasy Football Scout at their captaincy poll for the double game week. Currently, Jimenez leads the way with 28% of the vote. Jimenez is currently my captain in my bus team. Now, I haven't given captaincy too much thought yet. That was just where the armband, armband went when the game updated a few days ago. Uh, second in the poll are you know, very close together. Sterling and Aguero both have 14% of the vote. Next up then is Salah, who has just 6%. And then you've got a host of players, you know, roughly 3, 4, 5% of the vote. You've got Son, Mane, Aubameyang, De Bruyne, Lacazette and Hazard all getting votes as well. So it just shows you there's so many options uh, for captaincy. And I think that is going to make it a very interesting game week 35 because there's going to be quite a spread of captains. You know, FPL is pretty boring when most of us have, you know, a very similar team and similar captains. So this week should be... You know, it could be a bit, it could be carnage, really. You know, you're going to have a lot of people doing well, and probably a lot of people not doing so well. So I think that makes for a an exciting game week. Uh, as I said, I'm on Jimenez at the moment. It's just again two home fixtures. He's been amazing this season, so consistent. He's been my player of the season, so I might just reward him with the with the captain's armband this week. If I had a Man City midfielder, I think that's where I would go. I would probably go Sterling if I owned him. If I own KD, KDB, I think I would be very tempted to give him the captaincy as well. At present, I don't feel confident enough in Aguero to give it to him. But again, let's see what happens tonight. Uh, Salah, Mane, you know, Cardiff, good fixture, even though it's a single. They could easily outscore the double gaming player. So loads and loads of options for captaincy. Most likely, I think I'll probably just stick with Jimenez uh, and, and, and just reward him for his for his good service this season. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Uh, just a few things to mention before I finish up. I recorded Fantasy Weekly with James uh, on Monday night. So that should be available. I think it should be released today at 2 o'clock. Um, but it, it, could, it could be later as well. So I, once that once that pod is ready, I will share it on Twitter. Uh, lots more talk about the double game week in that one. So if you if you enjoyed this podcast, uh, I appreciate any retweets. Uh, subscribe to the pod as well so you don't miss out on any future episodes. L- reviews on iTunes are really helpful as well to get to get the podcast out there a little bit more. So leave a review and, and if you enjoyed it, give it a five-star rating. Uh, if you'd like more content from me, you can check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash FPL general. You can support me there and there's lots of extra content Extra podcasts, live streams, videos, uh, all that kind of stuff. WhatsApp groups, Slack channel. You can check it all out at patreon.com forward slash FPL general. I sent out a survey this week to my patrons. So this is the first year I've been doing the Patreon stuff. So I sent out a survey this week to get some feedback from my patrons. And I got some really good feedback, you know, really constructive feedback about how I can improve things for the final month of the season and moving into next season. So... If you want to check that out, you know, send me a message and I can, you know, any questions you have, just let me know and I'm happy to explain things. Uh, what else do I need to mention? There's a big tournament on Fantasy Bet this weekend, the Grand April. They have increased the prize pool to £8,000. So the tournament takes in the fixtures on Saturday, Sunday and Monday this weekend um, with a price, guaranteed prize pool of eight thousand pounds, so a nice, a nice prize pool to play for there. Um, if you've never played daily fantasy before on Fantasy Bet, there are free contests you can enter there as well with cash prizes, just to get the hang of things. Maybe you might give it a go next season. Then, um, as always, if you are using Fantasy Bet, it's eighteen plus and be gambleaware dot org. Uh, I put a, I'll be putting an article together as well today for the Fantasy Bet blog on. Double Game Week 35, so be sure to check out the blog there. Lots of good information. Uh, bookies odds and all that kind of stuff there to help you with your FPL decisions. Enjoy the rest of your week. 
Uh, enjoy the Champions League tonight. Uh, thanks, as always, for listening. It means a lot that, that so many people you know take half an hour out of their week to listen to this podcast. Um, so thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh, and good luck in Double Game Week 35.